Hey everybody, Dr. Sheikh here from The Dentalist. Hope you guys are doing great. In the last video, we talked about fracture toughness and impact strength. I've attached the link here so you can go back and watch it if you haven't. Anyway, today we'll talk about the fatigue properties of dental materials. As we know that dental materials have to face complex forces while they're inside the oral cavity in the form of restoration or prosthesis, and they're inevitably subjected to intermittent stresses over a long period of time. These intermittent stresses can cause the material to get fatigued in the long run and results in micro cracks, which could eventually lead to fracture of the material. Now these micro cracks are not formed overnight, rather it takes several months or years. The cause of these micro cracks could be due to an improper position of the restoration or due to a faulty shape of the prosthesis, which puts an unusual load on the dental material continuously. So the final fracture of the material usually occurs at a very low level of stress, which often puts the patient in doubt and they claim that their denture fractured while biting on soft food and they start doubting your quality of work. So it happens because of these irregular forces being imposed on the prosthesis for a longer period of time, which ultimately results in fracture. Now, before we dive into the fatigue properties, I want you to get familiar with a few terms. The first one is cyclic stress, which is the distribution of forces that changes over time in a repeated fashion, which means if the load is being applied on the mesial side, it would then shift to the distal side and then keep shifting from mesial to distal in a cyclic fashion. The second one, the second terminology is stress cycles, which is basically the number of times the material undergoes stress. Okay, now fatigue properties of a dental material may be evaluated in one of two ways. The first way is to apply a cyclic stress, cyclic stress, it's shifting its position periodically. This is called cyclic stress. So the first way is to apply a cyclic stress at a given magnitude and frequency and observe the number of stress cycles required for failure. This method gives us the fatigue life of a material. For example, if we're keeping these cyclic stresses going on and we're waiting for the material to fracture and it takes like 10 stress cycles to fracture so that would give us the fatigue life now the second approach is to select the maximum number of stress cycles let's say 10,000 cycles and determine the value of cyclic stress which is required to cause fracture within the maximum number of st stress cycles okay this gives us the fatigue limit so fatigue limit is basically the amount of cyclic stress that a material can bear in an infinite number of stress cycles. It is kind of confusing, but you will get a hold of it if you kind of like follow my words, okay? And if you keep going with me. So the most rigorous approach is to test many specimens at different cyclic stress levels, okay? And to determine the number of cycles to failure in each case. As the applied cyclic stress is increased, for example, two kilograms, four kilograms, the number of stress cycles to failure would decrease, okay? Because we're increasing the cyclic stress so the stress cycles that the material can bear would definitely decrease, okay? So we discussed fatigue life and fatigue limit. The best way to remember these both is to focus on the words life and limit, okay? Fatigue life tells us about the life of a material, like how long will it stay durable for? For instance, a computer mouse can work for 1 million clicks and then it would stop functioning properly. This would be the fatigue life of the mouse. In a filling material, if a material would stay effective until 20,000 stress cycles, this is the fatigue life for the filling material, okay? 
On the other hand, fatigue limit tells us about the maximum amount of cyclic stress that a material can bear during infinite number of stress cycles. Okay? For example, if a material can bear 2 kilograms of forces for infinite stress cycles, this would be its fatigue limit. This means that the material would keep functioning for the longest time if it undergoes only 2 kilograms of cyclic stress. Get it? So when we want to know about the fatigue limit, we keep the stress cycles infinite and we find out the cyclic stress, the amount of cyclic stress required. Okay, the limit of cyclic stress that would keep the material durable. Okay, and in fatigue life, we are actually checking out how many stress cycles can the material bear. Now I would end this video here because I don't want to overwhelm you with a lot of confusing terms and statements. That's why I've kept this video a little short and sweet. Okay, and it would be great if you could go through this video once again to get a good understanding of the concept of fatigue life and fatigue limit. In limit, you're checking the cyclic stress, amount of cyclic stress. And in fatigue life, you're checking the stress cycles. Okay? In the next video, we'll talk about abrasion resistance and a little bit of uh, more information about it. If you have any questions or confusions about today's topic, please feel free to write them down in the comments below. I've also put some questions in the description and I expect you to answer them in the comment section so we can see if your concept is clear about these terms. Like the video please if it was helpful and subscribe and share the channel with your friends. I'll see you next week. This is Dr. Sheikh saying goodbye to you. Take care till we meet again.